Hi guys and welcome to Biological Sciences for Year 10. This is Activity 5 where we're going to look at um, our first sort of introduction into genetic crosses. But before we do that, what we want to do is identify some key terms and look at um, dominant and recessive genes. How they come about, how we label them, and then how we can use them in our crosses. And then in Activity 6, we'll then run through all our single um, cross problems and I'll show you how to um, work out what the probability is of getting a certain characteristic. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to go through when we're dealing with any form of genetic cross is some definitions. Now, I've put up the major definitions here so that you can use them. By all means, write them down. You are going to need to learn them. Okay, you're going to need to identify and understand what we mean by these words, genotype, phenotype, gene, allele, homozygous, and heterozygous. Okay, so let's just go through it, and I'll explain it in um, a little bit more detail so that you can understand what's going on. Now, the first one is the genotype. Now, when I look at the word genotype, I think of gene. And I think to myself, gene, type, what are the type of genes I've got in, the, um, in my uh, little cross that I'm going to be looking at? So, basically, a genotype is the type of gene that you are dealing with that's coming from the dad, the type of genes which are coming from your mum. Now, remember, you'll have two types, okay? Because we've got, two, uh, we've got a pair of chromosomes. So you'll get one from mum's mum and dad, and you'll get one lot from dad's mum and dad, okay? Now we don't know which of the genes the sperm may be carrying or the egg may be carrying, so you'll always have two types. So we tend to use letters to denote the type of gene. Now, dominant genes are ones which are always expressed. Recessive genes are ones which are quite weak. So if you think of dominant being big and strong and they dominate over the whole thing and recessive being little weedy genes, then you get the idea that we're going to use a capital letter which is going to represent the dominant gene and a little lowercase letter which is going to be your um, recessive gene. Okay. Now if you put two recessive genes together, then that characteristic is shown through. If you put the dominant and the recessive together, the dominant is going to come through. All the time. So now we're looking at how do we get this variety. So the genotype looks at the specific types of genes that you've got. Excuse me. <coughs> specific type of genes. So for example you might have let's say um, brown hair color is uh, dominant and blonde hair color is recessive. So when I wrote the genotype for that um, let's say I have got uh, genes for brown and blonde hair. Okay, my hair is dark brown, so it would be a capital B, little b, because I've got brown hair, and my recessive is the blonde hair, which is the little b. Okay, and we'll go through this in a little bit more um, detail in this activity, so it will make more sense. But what I'm trying to get over is that I would have that information from my parents. The dominant shows through. Now, what shows through we call the phenotype. I call it the physical type. Okay, I try to think about it, the physical type. And um, so that is what comes through. The genotype is what could come through. Okay. Now that only has bearing when we look at my kids because of the information that's inside me being given out to my kids. But the phenotype is what I have got, what I have actually demonstrated. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. The gene is the specific bits of information which code for my hair color. Okay, so somewhere on my chromosomes, there will be a gene for my hair color. Okay, I know my hair color is brown. That's the phenotype. And it could have a genotype of big B, there's my brown hair, little b, there's the blonde hair. Now I know that little b's got to be around somewhere because both my kids have got blonde hair. Okay, so as a result is I think I've got big B for brown hair, little b for blonde hair. Now an allele is a different type of the gene, which is basically big B or little b. Which one are you? Okay. So the allele basically talks about the type of gene that you've got. So you can have a variety of different types. If we think about eye color, 
You could have a blue allele, a brown allele. You could have a gray allele, a green allele. It just gives you a variety of different things. It doesn't quite work like that, but it, if you can understand it that way, that, that, that would make sense, okay? They're all coding for the gene eye color, but we've got different alleles which are possible. Now, when we start looking at our genes, remember we always talk about them in twos, okay? Because we have a pair of genes, because we have a pair of chromosomes, because we have a pair of individuals that made us in the first place. If those alleles are the same, we call them homozygous. Homo meaning same. Zygous is the zygote. Inside the zygote, we will have the same alleles for that specific type of gene. However, if they are different, we call them heterozygous. We've got two different alleles. So that would be big B, little b for heterozygous. If I wanted homozygous, it would be big B, big B, or little b, little b. Okay? So homozygous, the same alleles in the, in the zygote. Heterozygous, different alleles. Well, I hope you find that um, useful. As I say, as we go through, you will get to use these terms all the time. Okay, so as I stated, dominant um, characteristics will always be shown with a capital letter. Recessive will always be written as a lowercase letter. And when you're choosing your letter, what I tend to do is make sure that you choose a letter which is useful. For example, one that really has a difference between capital and lowercase. Don't use something like O or S or C because when you're writing it quickly, it's very difficult to see whether you're dealing with a capital or a lowercase. So use something which is useful and often use the dominant um, characteristic. So as I say, brown hair, I use a big B. Okay, so make sure that you um, you identify that. And again, we'll practice that as we go through. As it states here, one allele in the pair of genes may be dominant over the other, and thus we'll be coding for different types. Now, as I said, homozygous, another name for homozygous is pure breeding, because you've got identical information. And this comes in very important, especially when you're dealing with things like animals or dogs, or, you know, you want a pure breed. For example, you take a golden retriever, you will mate it with another golden retriever, they will have the same information because of the type of breed that they are. As a result, we will call them purebred. You take an Alsatian and a golden retriever, you're gonna have heterozygous in there. It's gonna be a hybrid, it's gonna be a mixture of both. Okay, so as it stated, if the two alleles are lowercase, then they are said to be homozygous recessive. If you've got two capital letters, which is the same, it's gonna be homozygous dominant, okay? Heterozygous, basically, you can't have um, you can't have two types of that because one will be dominant, the other one will be recessive. Doesn't matter which way around you put them. Okay, so let's look at this example. In this case, we've got sweet peas. Now that we've got the sweet peas produce a round seed, which is dominant, and then we've got a wrinkle seed, which is recessive. Now notice we've chosen R for round seed because it makes a difference between the capital and the lowercase. So, we've got these questions. If the genotype is capital R, capital R, then what is the seed? What, what is the phenotype of the seed? Now, phenotype is the physical feature. It's going to be, um, it's going to be round, okay? Why is it round? Well, basically, we've got two dominant alleles. Now, we would call that a homozygous dominant or pure breeding seed. Okay, why? Because both the alleles are the same. In the second one, we've got the genotype being capital R, little r. Now this is a heterozygous or a hybrid. Okay, we've got the dominant allele coming from one of the parents and the recessive allele coming from the other parent. So the result is in this case, it's also going to be round. Why is it going to be round? Because the capital R allele dominates over the recessive one. And finally, we've got a genotype where we've got little r, little r. Now, this is homozygous recessive because we've got two lowercase letters. So the phenotype in this is going to be wrinkled, okay? It's going to be the opposite version. You have to have homozygous recessive for the recessive trait to come through. Now, a second example, again with sweet peas, we've got a yellow seed is dominant to a recessive gene for a green seed. 
Now notice we've not used green, we've used yellow because on the typeface here I can actually make that distinction. So big capital Y is going to be yellow, green is going to be little y. You do not use a G, you do not swap letters for the same trait. Don't, don't do that, otherwise we'll be in real problems. Okay, so same sort of thing. We've got a genotype capital Y, capital Y, homozygous dominant, so the phenotype is, you got it, it's going to be yellow. Then we've got a genotype capital Y, lowercase um, y, so it's now heterozygous, it's a hybrid, so the phenotype is still going to be yellow. Why? Because the capital Y allele dominates over the recessive, so it's that, that one is always going to be followed through. And finally we've got little y, little y, basically it's homozygous recessive, which means that the only information I've got there is for that little y, and it's going to be green. The phenotype's going to be green. Okay, so remember that because we've got pairs of alleles, each one of the gametes is going to have one of those pairs, okay, or one of those individual alleles. So that's where they come from, okay, remembering that that was due to a meiotic cellular division, haploid number of chromosomes. Look, I hope you found that useful, and, um, oh, sorry, I've got one more thing. Let's look at these two here. This is basically going to work out how you determine the type of gametes, and again, this is going to be useful in your crosses. So if we've got a parent which is homozygous um, dominant, okay, we're going to be using the letter T here. It doesn't, doesn't really matter what it codes for. If it's homozygous dominant, we've got two of the same type of alleles. The gametes will be a big T and a big T. One from the sperm, one from the egg. One from the pollen, one from the egg. Okay, come together, make a, a pair. All right, but what if we have, in the middle case, we've got a hybrid. We've got a heterozygous case. Now one of those gametes is going to have a capital T, whereas the other gamete is going to have that little t. We don't know which one's going to have it, but basically it comes together. As we go through our crosses it will make more sense as you can work out which one's which. Finally, if you've got a recessive, both um, recessive alleles come together, the gametes for those alleles basically will be little t, little t. Okay? That will produce an offspring, obviously, which is homozygous recessive, so the recessive trait comes through. 